Hello and thanks for watching. I'm Paul Arvison, Director of Research for Solar Household Energy, Inc. That's S-H-E, or SHE, a nonprofit organization based in Washington, D.C., USA. SHE strives to unleash the potential of solar cooking to improve economic and environmental conditions in sun-rich areas around the world. Over half of the world's population relies on wood, charcoal, or other biomass for daily cooking, leading to respiratory diseases, economic hardship, environmental degradation, and carbon emissions. Solar cooking offers a practical, affordable, and a sustainable alternative in sunny regions where fuels are scarce or expensive, including refugee camps. Many millions of people are housed in camps in sunny locations where solar cookers could reduce the need for wood, kerosene, or gas for cooking fuel. So since 1998, Solar Household Energy has worked with governments, non-governmental organizations, and the private sector to promote solar cooking. We do field projects, public awareness programs, education, and research. My work involves research on solar cooker performance. I have studied solar cooking for the past 15 years, and along with other researchers, we've learned a lot about how to make a better solar cooker. In 2014, an international team from about 25 countries began to develop a new international standard for all kinds of household-scale cook stoves, including solar cookers. As a part of that effort, we included a testing protocol for measuring solar cooker power, an American standard that was developed by Dr. Paul Funk. The new international standard, ISO 19867, includes that protocol. It's important for manufacturers to have a common standard for measuring cooker power so that we all have a fair basis for comparisons. I've been testing solar cookers using this standard for the past several years. I designed and constructed an instrument package to make the necessary measurements. This package uses commercial off-the-shelf but relatively low-cost sensors and data loggers. All of the details about the design and the related software are documented in articles on our website, sheinc.org. As an alternative, you could build an Arduino-based system that was developed by Solar Cookers International. Please contact them for the design details. The rest of this video describes how to use the off-the-shelf instruments to make a standard measurement of power of any type of solar cooker. So this is a training video for researchers in regional testing and knowledge centers anywhere in the world who would like to replicate the standard power measurements of solar cookers. I encourage you to contact me or others in SHE if you are interested in this work. Thanks again for watching. Now let's learn about standardized solar cooker testing. Now here's some of the equipment that you'll need to help with the setup for doing measurements. First of all, of course, you will need a handwritten solar cooker test record form. And this is just an example of one that was filled out. You also need a handheld digital light meter, which is another in instrument for checking on the solar irradiance, low cost device that's uh, handy. Uh, you'll also want to have a box of miscellaneous clips uh, that are used for hold, keeping things secure and for holding parts of the reflectors on some of the solar cookers. I have a collection of various rocks back here that I use to help adjust the leveling of the devices when we're setting them up on uh, sloping ground. And then of course this is the laptop. We have the HoboWare loaded into this software, into, the, into this computer to drive the data loggers for setting up the instruments. The instruments are housed in this Stevenson box and on the top of the box there are four instruments. First a pyranometer that is used for measuring the global tilted irradiance. Then uh, another identical pyranometer that measures the global horizontal irradiance. Uh, these are uh, designed by uh, scientist David Brooks and uh, provided uh, uh, from his institute at a fairly low cost. 
There's also a high quality pyranometer from Apogee that uh, has an amplification, so it's a very pre high precision pyranometer that measures global horizontal irradiance. And then there is an anemometer that is used for measuring the wind speed near the uh, solar cookers. So this is the external instruments for the uh, Stevenson box. And inside there you'll find the panel with several instruments. First there is the analog data logger that has four channels, 16-bit analog recording. And th that's what we use for the solar irradiance measurements and for the wind speed. The other data logger is, has a four channels of K-type thermocouples for measuring the temperature in up to four different solar cookers. And typically we will measure two cookers at a time with two thermocouples in each pot so that we have redundancy uh, for checking on any errors. This item is a solar charge controller that controls the power to charge the backup battery that is used in the in the back of the panel. There's a there's a 12 volt battery that is used to power the anemometer and the other instruments that are needed. There's also on the back of the unit there's a solar panel that is stored in a on a rack and that will be used when we get the equipment set up. The thermocouples are, when they're not used, they have special thermocouple wire. It's, it's a high temperature plastic material that's very high, high quality and, and reliable. And those are wound up on spools on the other side of the Stevenson box. So I have the data package here and we're gonna show how to load the two data loggers. So I have a laptop with the software installed on it from Onset Computing. It's the uh, it's called Hoboware and it provides a free package that you can use for loading any of their brands of data loggers. So I have two data loggers in the system. As you know, it's one of them is the analog data logger with four channels. The other is the four channel thermocouple. We're going to load those. They have USB connectors. So we're going to plug one of these at a time into the laptop. First I will uh, plug in the USB connector for the analog data logger instruments into the Hoboware and we can see that uh, it will beep and there will be a small identification at the bottom of the window that shows the name and uh, analog, uh, four channel analog data logger with its serial number. So all you need to do then is to go to the menu item that says device and launch. Click launch and then it will run for a moment and then it will set that up as it was pre-programmed for that data logger. And then when that's done, you can uh, just uh, close that uh, and remove the USB port and then plug in the thermocouple data logger. Same idea, same process. It will recognize that as a thermocouple data logger. So you go to device, launch, and then that will be set up on the button start setting so that all you need to do is click button start and it will program the data logger to start logging when you push the button on the data logger. So now we can just uh, remove this and uh, put these cables in the back of the panel out of the way and we're all set up to install the equipment in the field. So you're going to want to set up the equipment in a place that's free of shadows between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. You'll need to level the Stevenson box 
I use a rock to place under the box and then I watch the uh, bubble level that's on the top of the box to make sure that it is set level. Also make sure that you remove the protective cap from the Apogee pyranometer. Then lift out the solar panel that is stored on the back of the box. Then pull out the cable that connects to the solar panel being careful to get the polarity on the connectors correctly. Next you want to place the first test item in position without the pot. Next, we place the second test item in position without its pot. Now we're bringing the loaded pot over to the test item. This is a Haynes Model 2 that we're testing today. We have the proper amount of water in the pot. And now we are going to be installing the two thermocouples wires through the steam vent on the lid of the pot and into the water in the pot. In this close-up photo you can see how the thermocouple wires are bent to avoid their tips from touching the inside of the pot. Next we immediately cover the cooker with a white cloth to prevent the cooker from heating before we start collecting data. And we repeat the same steps with the second test item. Now we'll install the two thermocouple wires just as we did on the first test item. Now we are almost ready to start the test. Both test items have been covered with cloth to keep them from heating. We adjust the tilt of the tilted pyranometer to aim toward the sun. This instrument will need to be adjusted every hour during the test. Now we open the box and turn on the charge controller. We also turn on each of the data loggers using the start button on the top of their housings. You have to hold the button down for about 10 seconds for it to start. Then we remove the cloth covers from the solar cookers. We align both test item reflectors so that they show my shadow on the center line of the reflectors. These will also need to be turned every hour during the test. Parabolic cookers will need to be turned much more frequently. Now we take photos from the top view of each of the test items to verify that the placement of the thermocouple wires is proper and everything is documented correctly. It isn't required, but I like to also measure the solar irradiance using a handheld lux meter. This provides a quick check on the sky quality. Now an hour has passed and we need to turn the reflectors. We also adjust the tilted pyranometer to point to the sun. And every hour we also measure the irradiance and we record ambient temperature and wind speed from other instruments if they are available. Now start a timer for a one hour delay to remind you to turn the solar cookers toward the sun. 
fill in the hourly weather and solar irradiance data in the logbook. Now some time has gone by and this pot has reached the boiling point. You can see the water boiling. Since the temperature cannot increase any further with water in the pot, you can end the test whenever all test items have reached boiling or by 3 p.m. local time, whichever comes first. When the test is done, first you need to turn off the hot solar cooker pots. So you may need to bring a hot pad or cloth towel to handle the hot pots. Remove the thermocouple wires and wind them back on the spools. Turn the reflectors away from the sun and leave the lids off to let the pots cool. Do this for all the test items. Open the Stevenson box and turn off the charge controller. Then disconnect the solar panel and slide its cable back into the box. Put the solar panel in its storage rack on the rear of the box. At this point the test is done and you can carry the instrument box to a shady location next to your computer to read out the data. First I will uh, plug in the USB connector for the analog data logger instruments into the Hoboware and we can see that uh, it will beep and there will be a small identification at the bottom of the window that shows the name and uh, analog, uh, four channel analog data logger with its serial number. And you'll see this menu. Select the device menu and click readout. First you'll see a dialog box that asks, do you want to stop logging? Click stop. Then you'll get a dialog box that asks, do you want to plot the data? Click plot. So when you plot the weather data, it might look something like this. Now go to the file menu and select export table data. Click export. Then you can create a file name and save as an Excel CSV file. Now you can set up the data logger to be ready for the next test. On the menu, go to Device Launch. The Launch dialog will appear. Here you can set up the configuration of sensors, their names, sensitivities, and the logging time interval. We use a one minute time interval. Set the logger to start logging by push button. Then in the lower right, click where it says button start. That will send signals to the data logger and configure it so that it will start with a manual push button located on top of the data logger. By using this setting, you will not need to use the computer to set up the data logger for the next test. You can leave the data logger stored in this setting ready to start for as long as you like. It will not drain much from the batteries. Now repeat all of the readout steps for the thermocouple data logger. When this is done, remove the USB cables and put them back in the Stevenson box. Now you'll want to put the two USB cables back in the back of the panel. You'll notice that the data loggers now should be set showing, uh, indicating start at the top. Here, this is where the button is loaded. Where the, this, is where, this is where the buttons are for the data loggers that you will use to start them for the next set of measurements. When this is done, congratulations. You've completed a full set of standard test measurements.